One, two, one, two, sound check, mic check. So, again, I'm Mateo Crisostomo. I'm uh, 22 years old from the Philippines and I'm an aspiring Olympic level decathlete. One day. <laughs> so, Mateo, why did you decide to make the trip to Spain and join Shiroko and why Shiroko? Okay, so uh, the main reason I decided to go to Spain to train for my sport track and field was because I felt like it would help me make a big jump in my career. I felt like I was still very young. I wasn't getting enough exposure back home and uh, I was looking for training camps all over the world. That's, I was really looking for a solution because I knew that I had so much in me to give and so much left to chase in the sport. And one day, I got super lucky with the Instagram algorithm as uh, Shiroko just appeared on my Discover page. So I clicked it, it said train in Spain, it's a track and field academy based in Andalusia. And right away, I contacted them and they were very quick to reply. And so I knew that it would be a solution to get high level training, elite level training. And I saw that they were the two fastest hurdlers in Italy at that time. So it, it was very attractive to me. And then why did I choose Scirocco? It was mainly because of that. Like they were very quick to reply. Alessandro would re reply to my emails. And then we had a video call where he told me that the group is just small. We're just starting out and they were mainly sprinters and hurdlers but he already started to lo look for solutions for my training as a decathlete so that meant he already contacted coaches for my jumping and throwing which showed me that he was ready to help me and despite not even knowing who I really was he was already committed to helping me become a better athlete if I did decide to make the trip. Uh, what has been your most valuable learning so far? I think for me, the most valuable learning in the few weeks I've been here has been to just enjoy, to have fun. Like, sometimes track and field could be very taxing. And that's something that I really enjoy about being in the environment of Shiroko. They always remind you to have fun, especially during the big workout days. Like, I was telling, I was telling the coaches here that it's the first time in so long that I find myself smiling before, during, and after a workout where our mileage reaches more than 2,000 meters of sprint work or something like that. Or it's the first time during a lactic workout where I can just, I can still joke about it going into the last rep. And I guess that's been super big, not just uh, in my development as an athlete, but it's also changed a lot of how I look into life. Like, if I'm gonna be doing something, if I'm gonna be chasing my dreams, I might as well be having fun with it. So, I think that's been the biggest thing. Like, and I guess it's not something, I guess it's, I don't know if it's something they like imply or it's just how it just comes naturally to them. But, like, an example would be every time we line up before a rep, uh, Fofi, our top uh, male hurdler here he always says have fun and that like that two those two words have helped me so much as an athlete like I'm just I'm about to run the 300 and I know I have what like six more or eight more reps of sprint work after but he reminds me to have fun so it's like yeah let's have fun with it let's smile while we're doing it like even now before the interview Alessandro said let's have fun so yeah it's been a lot it's been great I've I guess that's been the most valuable learning so far to just enjoy what I'm doing with enjoy chasing my dreams yeah no 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 I can't stop give me five you're my nigga <laughs> <laughs> Special question. Yes. Were you having fun the first time you tried a segment breakdown workout? I was having fun because Fofi said to have fun. Fofi is always right. Yes. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> what have you enjoyed the most about being in Shivok? 
I think the thing I've enjoyed the most, well, of course I enjoy training, but I enjoy the culture of the team, and I I enjoy the diversity. Like I was thinking to myself one of these days, like it's so amazing how we're such a we're a young training group based in the south of Spain. Like before coming here, I never heard of Montreal or Almunia Car. Like, and I have friends in Spain. My sister lives in Spain, and they didn't know about it. So we're like in a place that's not so known in Spain, but none of us have, none of us are Spanish. The Alessandro, Elisa, and Hassane, they're all from Italy. I'm from the Philippines, and Yanni's from Finland. So like, that's what I enjoyed the most. Like, we're such a diverse group of people, and you can tell everyone wants each other to get better. We're all here chasing our dreams. We all decided to make the trip away from home just just so we could accomplish something we set ourselves out to do so i think that's that's very beautiful in itself how we chose to go to a place in spain like we didn't even go, choose to go to madrid or barcelona we chose a place in the south of spain and none of us are even spanish and we're all here chasing our dreams so i think that's what i've enjoyed the most just seeing everyone chase their dreams and have fun doing it get the reason why Shiroko decided to be based here? Well, from my understanding, the weather is perfect. I mean, look at it. It's, it's sunny. We're, we're approaching December and it's, it still doesn't get too cold. The conditions are good. It's, we haven't had a training session where we had to stay indoors or something because of rain. So the, the weather is good. Another thing is we're really close to the beach, so it's very relaxing if you just want to, you know, during your days off or after training, it's an easy trip to the beach, to the shore, so it's been very relaxing and yeah. Yes. How you felt working on a track like this? Uh, well, I still remember the first day of training. When we, I arrived at Alessandra and my sister was still here with me, the first thing I said to my sister was, wow, this track feels very, very fast. And so far, I think it has been fast. I, I feel like I've been running pretty fast for my standards. So, and the, the thing about the track here in Montreal, I, I don't know if it, you can see it, but it's complete. We have, we have two cages for throws. We have multiple circles for shot put. And we have a place where you can train your throws where you don't have to mind the distance because you're throwing it against the net. We have pole vaults, we have two sand pits, we have everything here. So yeah, the, the track, the facility is nice. The people here know how to take care of the track. The people in the club, they're very welcoming they also besides Shiroko they, you can tell they want to help you improve so the the culture the culture the track everything's been perfect it's the perfect place for a track and field athlete to grow and chase their dreams what do you do when you are not on the track when i'm not on the track i it's a lot of downtime a lot of time to rest to relax and uh, I think that's another thing that stuck with me when I arrived. Uh, Alessandro said he doesn't want, I guess, the perspective of like Olymp Olympic level, pro level athletes is when you're an athlete, that's what you think about the whole time. You're dialed in the whole time. But Alessandro said uh, he wants us as athletes to also take time off. So. When, during, when I'm not in the track, I just take time to rest. I, I take a nap. Sometimes I read a book. I read articles. I watch Netflix or YouTube. And it's just really time to relax. Enjoy, enjoy the small city of Montreal. Sometimes I go to the park, listen to a podcast and all those stuff. What about the burgers? <laughs> That's only for Saturdays. <laughs> How speed? speed work is helping you with all the other disciplines? Well, uh, I feel like it's actually helped a lot because uh, just to give a small look into it, when I arrived, I arrived, my first training session was October 3 
And for our first four weeks, Alessandro said, let's get fast. Let's work general prep. I didn't touch any of my other disciplines. I, d I did a little of throws, like I had two or three sessions of throws or, and around two sessions of pole vault. But besides that, it, it was all speed work. And now I've been touching a lot of my other events and I've seen it. It's been so much easier to apply the technique of those events because I guess you could say in track and field, speed is probably one of the most important things, especially in the for a decathlete, it makes jumping so much easier. Like I was, I was telling Alessandra and Yanni, when I do my pole vault through a short approach, I'm pushing poles, like the, the way the poles have been bending with me, with the poles that I usually use have been not how they have been through a short approach. So the speed work has helped a lot as a decathlete. So yeah, it's made a lot of my disciplines easier. I even feel like it's made my throws easier. I don't exactly know how, but like it's easier for me to move and apply the technique now with my, through the speed work we've done. Maybe it has something to do with my coordination and such, so yeah. How is it to work with Olympic level athletes and with their coaches and with the flies coming around? <laughs> so, I feel like for me that was the, as I said earlier, uh, that was a big selling point of why I wanted Shiroko also. Because I saw that they did have Olympic, Olympic athletes and uh, as a young athlete, I guess every, most athletes, at least for track and field, being a, an Olympian means you're the cream of the crop. You're, you're top in the world and I think every athlete, well, dreams of that and that of course is my dream to one day say that I got to compete in the Olympics and uh, so training with them and the coaches it showed me it showed me how they live their day-to-day -day life how they train how they approach training and it's it's nice to have like I, everybody's journey is different of course but it's nice to see a blueprint it's nice to have it in the flesh of some you're talking to people who like I was just the other day, I was talking to Elisa and Fofi about some of my favorite athletes and it's kind of surreal to know that they've lined up against them. They've, they've, they were in Tokyo, they were in Belgrade and it's, it's just, it's nice to see that it is doable because especially from a country uh, where we don't have much, much Olympic athletes, like we have very few. It's nice to see that an Olympic athlete is someone very similar to me. Like, there's not much difference. Like, they're also people. And it's nice to see that they go through the same struggles, they go through the same day-to-day -day life as me, or at least similar. So it's, it's been big also in the mental aspect because it shows me that it is possible, that interacting with them shows me that uh, it's a, it might, it, it's a big dream, but it, it's something that I could reach. What has been the biggest difference training with Shiroko? Well, for me, the biggest difference has been their approach, <laughs> the approach to training has been the biggest difference of training with Shiroko. <laughs> like I said, uh, well, we're also blessed with a lot of technology here we have resistance machines for sprints which I feel work better than sleds we have Lila which is also a resistance training we have free lap we have the B sensors for velocity based training so that's been a big help also in the approach to training but there's one thing that I found that at first I was like why do we have to do it like this but after general preparation, like I was amazed with how much it has helped me as an athlete. Like from where I came from, at least my background as an athlete, there was drills were essential, but uh, the drills were the way we approach drills. Like 
especially with Alessandro and Yanni, what there's we've been putting an emphasis on certain positionings, leading with the hip instead of leading with like kick like basically leading with the hip, leading with the tibia, with the transfer of momentum, yeah. <laughs> Yanni's favorite term. And like we were doing drills that I did not understand that I couldn't get like I was telling Alessandro once, like for me the most challenging part of the training day is the start where we do the mobility drills and because I, I can't seem to get it but like there was a time like after general prep suddenly everything just clicked like it well of course I still have a long way to go but it was my movements felt so much better I felt quicker I felt more efficient and that was such a big thing and when I was thinking about it something that I thought of was Karate Kid the wax on wax off like right uh, the, he was like why why am i doing this wax on wax off and like in his biggest fight he understood that it, it was helping him so like that's been the thing like we do these movements where it's like why am i doing this and then suddenly when you're running without even thinking you're like oh my god this is why we've been doing the drills this is why it's all coming together it it comes together in my throws it comes together in my jumps my sprints even in my aerobic work i feel more efficient so i think that's been the biggest difference the emphasis on drills and just trusting it trusting in it trusting in our coaches knowing that they they too have a lot of experience they've been well we're very blessed to have coaches who have been around the world who have trained multiple athletes multiple sports so i guess when you put all of that together as alessandra says the future is bright and i do very believe so i mean you see i'm wearing shades right now so the future is bright with shirok and i'd like to say it's been it's been fun i've been having the time of my life here so yeah i'm very happy to be here